This is the Big 3 News lead story of the day. And uh, we are joined right now on the Skype line with Don't Mess with Texas. And we're talking about the Afghan story, about the, the runoff election, and Abdullah Abdullah, who has, uh, has bailed out, essentially, of the uh, runoff election that was to be held this week. And by default, it looks like uh, President Karzai is going to be the, uh, the recognized official leader of Afghanistan. Well, I'm interested in the Afghan war. And I think, I think it's incredible that you have two men that have so much power in their hands right now that they could help bring that country together. And it's sad that at this critical point in their country's history that they choose to fight instead of work together to achieve that common cause. And who would those two individuals be? Well, Abdullah and Karzai. Okay, so the, the two men who are most responsible for the, the welfare and the future of the Afghan people, uh, you're saying that they are handling this very irresponsibly, is that correct? They're acting like Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> well, maybe that's some of the traits and characteristics they've picked up from our form of government. What do you think? I think so. You know, that Afghan government has some very real problems that they're facing. Um, some of them are criminal. I think the election fraud that took place, there's no doubt that the criminal activities took place. Uh, the government is based on preferential treatment of individuals and tribes by certain government officials. Uh, there's just no clear lines of delineation from the insurgents and criminals and corrupt uh, officials there. Also, a big issue for that country is the fact that the officials have varied levels of learning, competency, and capabilities and they are seriously understaffed and underfunded. They have no means of collecting revenues or taxes and figuring out a way to use those resources to help rebuild that country. So you're saying that the, the whole political process is right now not developed enough, it's not mature enough to be able to run an effective government? Yes, sir. Why is it that a lot of these countries, particularly in this region of the world, uh, when there are voting irregularities, when there are abnormalities. Uh, take, a, for instance, a uh, look back at Iran. They recently had an election. There was, there was such a, a fuss and a focus on, on things that happened in that country with regard to the voter turnout. But then it, it just disappeared. Why, why does that happen in these countries? Well, I would think that if we put ourselves in the Afghan people's place, I wonder how many Americans would go to the polling sites if their lives were on the line. And so I think that not only do they not have enough money to be able to support their candidate, uh, their lives are on the line by simply going to vote. And I think that's a big issue. So definitely the conditions in Afghanistan uh, can be very intimidating for people who's trying to get out and vote. Here in the United States, we haven't experienced anything like that in, in hundreds of years, actually. And, you know, it seems like that we, we have such a low voter turnout now, we just take so much for granted here in the States. And, and here you've got people that are thirsty, it seems like, and they're hungry for, for the right to be able to vote and to build their government, but yet the corruption has not been rooted out. What do you think is going to be the, the answer to this? Well, while the problems with the runoff election will affect our ability to be successful in Afghanistan, the runoff election problem should not deter us if we believe the reasons for being in Afghanistan are the right things to do. Yes, I think that we need to remember that the day after 9-11, President Bush said that the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. And Americans overwhelmingly then agreed. But after initiating the war in Afghanistan, he diverted his attention to Iraq when apparently the need to bring down Saddam Hussein became more important than hunting down and punishing those that were actually responsible for 9-11. And Afghanistan was put on the back burner for seven years and we completely destroyed our reputation around the world. I believe President Bush was correct in saying that we should hunt down and punish those responsible for 9-11. If the terrorists can do it once, they can do it again unless we significantly disrupt their ability to wreak terror on U.S. soil and around the world. How will you define success? You're saying that, uh, you know, that we have to go after the terrorists, we have to hold those responsible for 9-11 that committed the acts. 
And I heard one of the politicians on TV this weekend say, you know, that we need to just win. But I think so many people in our country are struggling with what does winning look like? What is that going to look like at the end of the day? Well, I think that there was a problem with the nomenclature saying that we are at war with terrorism. We can't win the war on terrorism. It is, there's too many of them to be able to handle. But what our strategy is in Afghanistan, according to the McChrystal uh, assessment report, is that we are to disrupt, dismantle, and eventually defeat al-Qaeda and prevent their return to Afghanistan. I think that that is something that can be accomplished and that needs to be our focus. Now, what's interesting is that this strategy is not directed at the Taliban and other insurgent groups or toward liberating the Afghan people from human rights atrocities. Yet General McChrystal's recommendation indicates that we must deal with the Taliban and other insurgent groups and we must win over the Afghan people if we are to achieve the strategy of defeating al-Qaeda. So the question remains, is the strategy still important and is it worth the loss of American soldiers' lives? Now I believe that both Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda are alive and well. General McChrystal's report makes it clear that al-Qaeda is capable of resurfacing and rebuilding Afghanistan so the threat from al-Qaeda still exists. If we agree our military should be used to protect American lives, then I think you must agree that the strategy is still important. And I also think that when you consider the fact that the women and children, I think you'd be hard pressed to find another country where women and children have been as oppressed as the Afghan people have been. So do you then, do you make a distinction between Al-Qaeda and the Taliban because some of the administration have alluded to the fact that they may try to reach out to the Taliban and bring them into the political process. Do you think that's a wise idea? There are several major players in Afghanistan and the Taliban are a central player in that process. According to the McChrystal report, we have no choice but to deal with them. I'm not sure that I agree with dealing with them by paying them off, but I do think that there is a need to help those that are in the Taliban that want to have a civilized government, that we help them both in an economic way to achieve that. So, you know, General McChrystal did make that point though, Tex. He said that uh, you have to win over the people and, and isn't that essentially the same strategy that we, we found to be successful in Iraq, that we, we stopped target bombing and we started building coalitions of uh, competing interests. We started bringing them into the government and we started showing the people that we were there to support them. I do think there's some similarities between Iraq and Afghanistan. What's interesting is that the McChrystal Report also points out that the Afghan people are deeds-based people, meaning that their perceptions are driven by actions not so much by religious beliefs, which is what we primarily faced in Iraq. And that's true. I mean, when you've got the religion factor involved, uh, it seems like people are much more willing to go to extremes. Whereas in Afghanistan, if it's simply deeds-based, you know, they're not so committed to some of the beliefs. They're more committed to, you know, cause and reaction, cause and, and result. I think it's also important to note the importance of the Taliban. They probably are more capable of running that country than the existing government is. They have governors in every sing single province who are evaluated regularly and replaced. They have a court system in place as well. And so I'm not sure how you eliminate the Taliban and not deal with them in some way for those that want to help develop a civilized country.